What's up everyone, welcome to another video. And today we're gonna to talk about what not to do on patch day release as a crafter. From someone who has done pretty much everything wrong and made about every mistake you can make. <laughs> So this is my first ever patch release. I joined the game around seven or eight months ago. So Endwalker is like my first real time in current content. And coming from WoW, I knew that patch days would be an amazing opportunity to make money. And that the money making window generally closes pretty fast. In WoW, for example, making food or raid gear was a great way to make money as soon as those new wings come out. Uh, I didn't quite realize how fast this money making window would close in Final Fantasy. So that was, yeah, that was a big, a big realization. But turns out there's, there's a lot I didn't know. I wanted to go into this without reading any big guides and treat it like the new adventure it was and try and find everything out myself. Obviously, there was a bit of word of mouth of, hey, this is this is where you find this and that kind of thing. But I didn't want to read a big guide of how to be prepared for patch day. I just wanted to go into it, make mistakes and learn. And yeah. I, I, there was a lot I didn't know. I learned a lot of lessons, painful and very expensive lessons that I want to share with you all in this video. So I worked pretty hard to level up my crafters to 90. I think I got everything up but bar two to level 90. I leveled my gatherers as well and unlocked the special gathering books, went around and gathered the special like secret ingredients at the timed nodes that had no crafting recipes, knowing they'd be part of the new crafts. And I geared up my crafters knowing it would be pretty hard to make the new raid gear and somehow... I still made some massive mistakes and yeah, I messed up. So let's get into the video. <laughs> so let's wind it right back to the day of the first patch coming out. People were looking to walk right into new Savage Raids in their fresh 580 gear. Maybe they wanted the top tier raid food and tin 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 tinctures, the little potions as well, or maybe they want materia. So there's gonna be a huge influx of players heading to the market board as soon as this comes out. So tip one I would give you is make sure you cap out on crafting scripts before patch day. So I logged in ready to make my millions with nothing but hopes and dreams. And I was immediately crushed when I realized I didn't have any recipes. So I went into my, my crafters and I looked for these new 580 items and there was nothing there. And they're all tied behind master books and you need to buy them with crafting scripts. So I had no crafting scripts when this came out. I was immediately behind and I had nothing. So the first thing to do is make sure you cap on these crafting scripts so you can buy at least a book or two on release. And then you only have to grind for the extra ones. Let's say you main, you, you, you prioritize weaving and you wanted to make all the weaving gear. Uh, you could go in there and get the book on day one and just be ready to go. Rather than have to grind scripts for every single book where the prices are falling and you're missing out on those good deals. So this is super important because those first few hours, uh, you're going to miss some, some crazy money making if you're not ready, if you're out there grinding the script still. So yeah, that was my first mistake and a very timely mistake. But master recipes bought for a few classes and I was on to making gear. Tip two, over meld your gear with materia. Oh my, this was a big I dropped the ball here. So I leveled the crafters and got the best gear and threw some materia in. Job done, right? No. I couldn't even craft the, the 580 gear as my craftsmanship and control were too low. So for those that don't know or don't get involved with melding, each item is a number of materia slots. For example, like two on the left side of heads, legs, that kind of thing, and then one materia slot on the right. And I'd filled all those, but as a crafter, you can try to put an extra materia slot over what the maximum is, but that diminishes with each slot. So if you want to put a third slot on a headpiece, you might have a 17% chance of success. And then a fourth slot might be a 10% chance of success, which means you can use rank 10, 10 materia, 10 rank 10 materia at like a million gil before you even manage to get one extra slot. And yeah, those that don't form the slot are destroyed. So I had to buy a ton of materia on patch day, around 3 million gil worth of materia. I had some saved up already, but yeah, if I'd have known this before patch day, I could have been grinding out extra materia, farmed a big stack ready to go. And yeah, you'll lose a ton trying to overmeld your gear to get those slots. And this was a very expensive mistake. I'm pretty sure materia was, was more expensive to that day as well, because maybe other people had the same issue. But yeah, I spent, a lot of money here. I'm not sure if you can predict what the requirements are gonna be, but just assume you're gonna need a ton of craftsmanship to synthesize the item and a ton of control to make it a high quality. So yeah, big, 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 probably my most expensive mistake. And okay, recipes got, farming the rare items, got enough gear, all good to go. No, all of these recipes required items from new tombstones, the tombstones of aphorism. So tip three, make sure you cap on the combat tombstones. I think you can cap at like 2,000, this annoyed me so much because I had a couple of hundred tombstones of aphorism. I, I, I wasn't farming them because I didn't need the combat gear. 
I could have easily capped on this before patch day. I could easily have farmed to the 2k cap and on patch day could have just gone in and bought all the really rare stuff. So yeah, on, on, on patch day release, there's an, a ton of new items that went into the tombstone vendors. So non-crafters could easily like go in and buy these and sell them on the market board to fools like me that weren't prepared. So with no time to farm the tombstones, I was back on the market board spending millions, probably like two or three million again, buying at inflated prices. So cap on your tombstones before patch day unlike me whether you're looking to just sell the materials or to craft yourself it is real easy money trust me because i bought a hell of a lot and they were overpriced okay okay that's, that's everything done right tip four and this 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 was probably my most most uh foolish mistake meld your gear to be over the minimum requirements so once i hit the minimum requirements i thought i was all good just being able to craft the item though doesn't mean you can make it high quality and non-high quality items sell for peanuts compared to high quality gear. On patch day, you could sell like high quality legs or or uh, hands or top for over a million gil. I was th there were like uh, jewelry selling for a million gil. Normal quality gear wasn't selling for two hundred k. So over meld control even further. Once you've hit the minimum requirements, just keep it going. If you're using super expensive materials, you're paying like you're playing a real dangerous game if your control is crafting and you can only cap it at like 60% of a high quality chance. So yeah, I learned the hard way by selling a bunch of normal quality gear at a really reduced price. You want to be in the best position possible to make money here. And the final mistake, tip five. If you're not first, you're last. So I made a ton of gear, pretty much filled my retainer with 15 to 20 high quality gear items, all listed for like 500k to a million, making sure I'd undercut all the opposition. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make around 10 to 20 million here. Went to make some dinner, came back, nothing had sold, but the prices had fallen drastically. Patch day release, it is a race to the bottom. People are sitting at their retainers undercutting every minute. So they need to be the first item that people see. Some people even undercut drastically. So you could have 10 items that are selling for a million and someone could turn up and put an item up for 800K. And that's the new price. That's the, that, that's the new price to start undercutting. And I know some people might be using add-ons or plugins or something, but as someone who doesn't, you have to sit there and undercut people consistently. And I'm, I'm honestly talking, Go to the top item, undercut it by 100 gil. Go to the second item you're selling, undercut it by 100 gil. By the time you get to the bottom, that top item, someone's undercut you again. That's how competitive it was. So you really need to be there undercutting constantly. And as you're sat there changing your prices constantly, they'll start selling. Yeah. Overall, uh, overall I probably made around 10 million gil from selling crafted 3 at 580 gear, uh, weapons, jewelry. But due to my many, many, many mistakes <laughs> from doing this for the first time, I probably spent like four mil on materia and like three million on materials, making around two or three million of profit. By probably the third day, price had completely bombed out from a million an item down to like 150k an item. So overall, I probably made around three million, but I've been able to craft my own uh, gear for Savage Raiding and... Oh, but man, the, the effort to make that just wasn't worth it. I absolutely love crafting and I'm so excited for the next patch release, but I know all the mistakes I made. I'm going to be so much more prepared so, to, to get ready for the video. I made X amount of gill in three days because that's coming at the next patch release. But for now, this video is a somber realization that there's a lot to learn here. And my first time was pain this was rough this was really really rough um, but i just wanted to share some some big points that i learned here if you're looking to get into crafting so you can avoid making the same mistakes as me avoid wasting money like me without giving you a full guide of exactly what to do um and i want to show you the journey as well of like a new crafter in final fantasy 14 how much there is to learn how hard it can be and just keep it super real if you like the video drop a like on the video if you, uh, if you want to see more crafting videos, I don't really cover crafting guides or anything like that, but if you do want to see more, uh, drop it in the comments because I, I love crafting. Crafting is one of the most fun things in this game for me. I'm like two crafters away from being an Omnicrafter, I think. Uh, Armorer and Armorer and Blacksmith, I think, are left. Um, and yeah, I've also started Savage Raiding for the first time, so I'm going to have a video on that out very, very soon. So drop a follow if you want to see that. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, everybody, and I'll catch you in the next one.